So in this video, we want to derive the formula of a very important curve that we're going to see over and over again over the next couple of uh, lectures for sure. A uh, very important curve called a cycloid, and we're going to derive parametric equations for this. But the first thing I want to do is describe to you what the heck a cycloid is. So imagine that this horizontal line I just drew is the ground. And suppose we have a what we'll think of as a wheel roll or a ball, a ball or something. Let's just say it's a wheel something circular, rolling along the ground, okay, and so here's the deal, let's say we have the wheel here, and as time goes on, this wheel rolls along the ground, I'm just going to move it, let it roll a little tiny bit, alright, and so here's how you define the cycloid, as this point moves along the curve, um, where the, where is, what, how is that going to travel? So as the wheel rolls, where does this red point uh, go in the plane? So the idea here is that if the wheel has rolled to the point where now this green point is tangent to it, that means it came from the red point. So in particular on this picture here, this amount of distance that's been traveled horizontally is the same as the amount of arc length that's been traveled right here, okay? So as the wheel has rolled, <coughs> Um, that much of the, that green portion of the wheel has touched this green portion of the ground, and now this point is the point that's tangent to the ground. Um, that's not the question, though. That, so this is how we're going to understand how to derive these formulas. But the question is then, um, where is the red point on this circle that's been rolled along, right? And so that much of the curve has been traversed. So going back the other way, this much of the curve, about this much, has been traversed in the other direction. Okay, and the question is to try to write a formula for the path of the red particle here. And so I'll just draw the curve for us. It turns out this curve traces out a kind of a, this is, well, the name of this is a cycloid, but it, there's a one cycle, and then this would continue in both directions, on and on and on. Okay, so this curve that just keeps repeating by in this shape, this is called a cycloid. And what we want to do right now is derive parametric formulas for this cycloid. Okay, so what we need to do for sure first is get some axes here. So let's say we've got our, our horizontal, so that we'll call that our x-axis. That wasn't really centered on the point. And so let's make this our y-axis. And here's our x-axis. And the parameter here, our, our wheel is rolling along this curve, and so the, the parameter pr should probably be the angle. So there's a couple things that are happening here. Number one, the radius of, so this point right here at the starting point before it starts rolling, this point is 0R, so we'll call the radius of this circle R. Um, you can think of it as 1, but well, what happens if it gets bigger or smaller? So we want to make sure there's an R. And that obviously if this wheel stays on the ground and it's not bouncing, then there's a horizontal um, line that is kind of through the radius that, that's parallel to the ground. So this line is where the radius will stay. And at this point, um, the radius is now here. Oops. All right, so let's just say green and blue make uh, magenta, which is not true, but that's okay. And so the question now is, can we describe, or how do we describe the coordinates of this point, this red point? This red point is the one that we really want to describe now. So I'll just really blacken that one out so that we can see it, and that's our point P. So this point P, X, Y, this is the point that we want to describe, and we want to try to describe its, its coordinates in terms of the angle of rotation that this wheel has rolled so far. Okay, so the parameter is going to be this angle, and this angle is opening this way now. Okay, so can we describe these points, this point P, the coordinates of the point in terms of the angle theta? Alright, so hopefully we understand the question, but that's the question we're trying to ask. Now, we're going to want to clean this up, okay, but before we do, remember the formula for arc length, so back to this green piece right here. The formula for arc length of a sector of a circle, this is the radius times the angle subtended. But of course, this angle, these two angles are the same. So this is the angle theta as well. And so this arc length is r times theta. But remember that arc length is the same 
as the length down below. So this right here, this length of this green piece in the x direction, this is r times theta. That's all the way from the origin to the, cent the new center of the circle. That's r theta. Okay, and on the same token, this right here, this, this is r, the radius of the circle. Anytime you have a center connected to the boundary of the circle, that's r. But that means that this as well, this portion right here, is also r. Okay, so our baseline right now is that we have our x-coordinate is r times theta, but then it's going to have to go backwards and subtract some stuff off, because there's the x-coordinate of our point. So it's r theta minus something. And same thing in the y direction. The y direction is going to be just r minus, so this is what we're going to subtract off here, uh, this much, right? Uh, this is the actual height, so we're going to have to subtract off this much. Okay, so it's going to be r minus something. And when we draw this, we see that we have a couple of triangles, right? So let's take this picture and zoom in on it down here so that we can figure out the formula for this cycloid. Um, so here's the center of our circle. Let's call that C. Here's the point P, which is on the circle. That's right here. And then the other two lines are parallel to the x and y axes. The length of this is r, and we know that this opening is theta. And just by a little bit of trig, the length of this side, this is the adjacent side to the angle, so this is going to be r times cosine of theta. And this is the opposite side, so this is r times sine of theta. And then we just remember which one's which. The horizontal direction is being taken away from the x, right? So x is going to be r Theta, uh, r times theta and then go back and take away uh, r times sine of theta. So there's the parameterization of the x coordinate. Same thing in the y coordinate. The height of the center is r, but we have to take away this portion right here. All right, so that's r minus r cosine of theta. And this is a parameterization of the cycloid. Now what you should do is make sure we, we drew this for just a very small angle, a first quadrant angle. Just at least, you don't have to necessarily prove this, but at least test some values of theta um, as, the, as the wheel has rolled further and further along the ground and make sure that these formulas make sense when theta is in the second, third, fourth quadrant and that obviously as it repeats, we should keep getting the same answers back. So at least, at least plug in some values for theta and make sure that we get the, the right uh, coordinates back. And then we'll be able to use this to really solve some interesting problems. So the next thing in the notes is a very interesting application of this shape of the cycloid. It's actually flipped over, all right, a cycloid flipped over like this, uh, solves a number of very interesting physics problems, um, and there's a nice video following this little blurb in the notes for you to watch, and I hope you enjoy.